viewers, welcome to CEC lectures, myself Dr. Preeti Jagwani. I am from Department of Computer Science, Aribhat College, University of Delhi. Uh, so, presently under this series of programming in Java, we are undergoing the topic, uh, undergoing uh, the topic of exception handling and in our previous lectures, we have seen the basic fundamentals of exception handling, uh, what actually exception is, uh, how, are, uh, uh, how these exceptions are being handled uh, and about the types of uh, exceptions uh, we have also seen. And now in this lecture, we are going to, you know, get into more details about how to, uh, you know, kind of we can say frame the program or how to uh, write the programs which are uh, you know uh, having this exception handling as a mechanism to handle uh, their runtime errors. Uh, so, in order to you know uh, uh, let us try to recap uh, the exception handling uh, in a quick manner. So, exception handling was basically is uh, a mechanism to handle the runtime errors uh, so that the normal flow of the application uh, should not be you know uh, kind of uh, discontinued. It, it should be uh, maintained and whatever runtime errors are there, uh, exception handling is actually a good measure or an effective means to handle those runtime errors. So, here runtime errors I mean I am talking about the exceptions particularly, I am not talking about the errors and the difference between the exceptions and the errors we have the, uh, we have also seen that in our previous uh, uh, lectures. Uh, so, now coming into more details of uh, exception handling in Java. So, exception handling in Java is going to be you know uh, we can say uh, handled or is going to be implemented with the help of uh, total 5 keywords. Uh, so, Java provides uh, 5 keywords that are used to handle the exception. What are those 5 keywords? Uh, these 5 keywords are try, catch, throw, throws and uh, finally. Uh, so, in this lecture we will be looking into you know brief details of all the uh, 5 and then uh, in the subsequent uh, you know uh, slides and lectures we will be looking into details of each and every uh, keyword and the programs related to that. Uh, so, let us begin with the try keyword. So, try keyword is actually uh, you know a keyword which is used uh, to specify a block uh, where we are going to place the code which is uh, susceptible of you know uh, throwing an exception. So, it is uh, 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 try is actually uh, a block in where an exception code uh, should be uh, placed, but uh, with try you need to be very careful that try cannot be you know uh, stand alone there, try cannot be used uh, alone, it must be followed by either a catch or a you know a finally block. Now, what actually this catch block is? Uh, catch block is used to handle the exception. So, try block is having the code which is uh, going to or which may raise the exception just immediately after try without any statement in between there will be you know catch uh, a block if it is uh, there present in the program and it is used to handle the exception. So, uh, as you know uh, uh, as you must be you know kind of got uh, as you must have got till now that this catch block must be preceded uh, by the try block. It cannot be used uh, alone as you know try cannot be used alone catch also cannot be used uh, alone, but yes it can be followed by finally block later. So, if you know a finally block is there if it is uh, you know if it is making sensible in the program to put a finally block then that finally block will be you know placed after the uh, catch. So, there will be try then there will be either catch or finally or there can be two uh, both the two by catch and then you know finally. So, these three uh, blocks are there. But finally, if we look into that what actually this finally block is doing. Uh, so, finally block is actually you know used to execute the necessary code of the program. So, necessary code by here uh, by necessary code here I mean that the code uh, which is to be executed mandatorily irrespective of whether the exception is being handled or not. So, if the exception is uh, going to be handled catch is there to handle the exception after handling the exception the code which is to be you know kind of uh, uh, executed necessarily that is going to be placed inside the finally thing or even if the situation says that your uh, you know uh, exception is not being raised at all or not being you know kind of uh, uh, initiated at all then also you need if you have some code which is to be executed irrespective of whether the exception is handled or not 
that is to be placed in you know finally. So, finally as the name indicates will be uh, you know uh, definitely is going to be you know executed irrespective of the uh, exception thing. Uh, now, after that we have two more keywords one is throw and another one is uh, throws. Uh, so, throw uh, is actually the keyword which is used to you know throw an exception if we want to you know kind of uh, throw an exception we will be using throw keyword how uh, that I will be you know telling in you know subsequent uh, lectures with the help of examples. Uh, and the fifth and the last uh, keyword under Java exception uh, handling keywords is uh, throws. Now, please recall that you know uh, we have uh, seen um, the uh, categorization of checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions. There we have used uh, throws in one of the you know primary, uh, primary examples. So, basically throws keyword is used to declare exception that means it is going to specify that there may occur an exception in the method. It is not going to throw an exception although it is always used with the method signature. So, the method which is kind of you know uh, going to throw the exception that has to be you know kind of uh, checked uh, earlier by the uh, compiler before the uh, runtime. So, in case of you know uh, checked exception throw uh, in order to handle the checks checked exceptions uh, the keyword uh, throws is required. So, the 5 keywords uh, try uh, to place the block which may raise the uh, to uh, place the block of the code which may raise the exception uh, catch is there to handle the exception neither you can use you know try alone nor you can use you know catch alone they uh, try will be uh, along with either with the catch or finally or both and catch has to be preceded uh, with a try. Apart from that uh, we have throw which is there to throw the exception for throws and uh, throws is required in case of checked exceptions and finally block is there to put the you know uh, uh, code which is to be mandatorily executed irrespective of uh, uh, whether your exception is being handled or uh, not. Uh, so, now with all this you know uh, the exception uh, the meaning of the exception we understood then exception handling mechanism what is that we have understood and we have also seen the types and also the keywords. Uh, now, we are fully prepared to go into a particular program of uh, exception handling. So, how are we going to use this exception handling here I am going to you know use just a simple uh, a very simple program of uh, exception handling in which the uh, code is going to you know kind of uh, raise an uh, arithmetic uh, exception. So, here is the program which says uh, we have uh, you know uh, taken a public class and whatever the name is uh, the name here is the Java exception example and within this we have you know a main function as uh, indicates uh, you know uh, traditionally we can say. So, public static void main we have a string ARGS. And uh, please you know uh, kind of within the uh, main uh, notice the word uh, try the keyword try and then try is actually you know placed here like a block. So, there is a curly bracket which is curly braces which is opening and then there is a you know closing curly braces corresponding to that. And here you are going to place whatever code that may raise exception. So, here the exception uh, you know exception raising code is just the next statement uh, which says integer data is equals to 100 divided by 0 divided by 0 as you are aware that it is kind of an arithmetic exception. So, now the try is having a code which is going to raise an exception and just after try that means just after closing the block of try we have opened the block of catch and within the catch we need to uh, you know uh, write the exception uh, or the type of the exception which is uh, which may be you know kind of raised by the uh, code which is written inside the try. So, here it is arithmetic exception and arithmetic exception as you know it is a kind of we can say a class under the hierarchy of uh, exception. So, we have written an uh, you know a reference variable which is named here as e. And uh, within the catch block or within the body of the catch block we have uh, you know printed uh, 
this e so system dot out dot print ln e so here uh, what I can say here is this uh, e is actually an exception object and whatever details this exception object is having so what all details exception object uh, is going to have is actually the name of the exception the line number where the uh, exception is being you know kind of uh, we can say uh, raised and uh, then the description about the exception. So, all these things will be there inside this exception object which is uh, E here. So, we are going to print that uh, E and then whatever rest of the code you want to you know kind of um, get executed. So, that rest of the code here you can also you know write. So, in order to uh, uh, we can say indicate uh, that rest of the code we have written a system dot out dot print ln uh, which says rest of the code. And when we are going to you know kind of uh, compile this program as well as we are going to run this program whatever uh, you know kind of uh, uh, output we are going to have is shown on the screen. Uh, so, output says exception in thread, uh, thread uh, main uh, java dot lang dot arithmetic exception divide by uh, 0 which is followed by the statement rest of the code. Uh, so, that means an exception in the uh, you know main function now why main is you know known here as uh, uh, thread main that I will be telling you when you know we will be talking about the threading uh, uh, fundamentals in uh, Java. Uh, so, there is an exception inside this main function which has been you know kind of called here as the thread uh, main and what kind of exception is that? That exception is an arithmetic exception uh, which is uh, you know kind of uh, sub, uh, which is available under Java dot lang and this is uh, divide by 0. So, the name of the exception, the uh, you know description of the exception and the function uh, in which the exception is being raised all is being you know kind of uh, uh, traced here or all is being you know printed here when we are trying to print the uh, e which is the exception object. So, exception object is having all those uh, all these uh, details and then after you know printing the details of e we have uh, written uh, one more printing statement that was uh, system dot out dot print ln which was rest of the code. So, that uh, is string that rest of the code is printed here that means uh, after handling uh, the exception which is being raised by the try block catch block can have more uh, you know statements and those can be you know we can say uh, those uh, can be uh, executed in a clean uh, manner. Uh, so, now uh, when we talk about the uh, try and catch block as a complete unit, uh, we uh, understood by this time that this Java try block is used to enclose the code uh, that might throw an exception and it must be used within the method. So, in the in, in the program uh, we have used a try uh, uh, code or the try block within the method main. So, that uh, try block has to be used uh, within a method and if an exception is occurring at a particular statement inside the try block the rest of the block code which is available inside the try will not be executed on uh, you know uh, on encountering the exception the control will direct transfer to the uh, catch block which is you know uh, written just after this uh, try block whatever is being written inside the try block uh, you know after the statement which is raising an exception will not be uh, executed. So, for example, here in this program uh, we have integer data is equals to 100 uh, divided by 0. Now, for example, we have you know uh, written uh, that uh, you know uh, some statements for example, system dot out dot print ln welcome to the world of uh, Java exception. So, that uh, you know uh, print ln statement or whatever code you are going to write uh, inside the try block after the statement which is going to raise an exception is not going to be uh, you know kind of uh, executed because ja, you know immediately upon raising the exception the co uh, control will be transferred uh, to the uh, you know catch block. So, uh, what we can say here in totality is uh, it is recommended not to keep the code in the try block. Uh, that will not throw an exception. So, try block must have 
the code which is which might you know throw an exception and uh, Java tribe lock as I have already told you in the introduction that must be followed by either uh, you know uh, by a catch or a finally uh, block. So, here uh, if we you know look into uh, general syntax of the uh, Java try catch uh, block. So, here it will be you know try uh, and within the try block this block is there uh, uh, demarked by uh, the curly braces. So, within this block you have uh, whatever code uh, that may throw an exception and immediately it is followed by catch you cannot place any you know statements in between try and uh, catch uh, blocks and within the catch blocks uh, uh, as the parameter of the catch uh, function you have uh, you know uh, as the parameter of the catch you have exception class name and uh, the reference and then you can you know place uh, some uh, body here uh, which can be uh, the body of the uh, catch block. So, within the catch as in arguments we have exception class reference uh, class name uh, which was arithmetic exception or you know um, uh, null pointer exception, file not found exception or whatever exception uh, you are uh, you are you know kind of suspecting that the code is going to throw. Uh, and then uh, the code is going to raise and then uh, you know the corresponding uh, reference variable name should be there. Now, when we try uh, you know when we talk about the try and catch I have told you that this try block will be followed by either by the catch block or by the finally block or by both in the sequence of catch and then finally. Uh, so, if we look into the you know uh, general syntax of try and finally block. So, the try is not going to change try is having you know within the uh, curly bracket the code may throw an exception uh, while if we look into the finally what is the difference between this finally and the catch in terms of syntax is uh, catch is having you know uh, a parameter which is to be passed here. Uh, finally, is not having any parameter it is just having the body of the uh, you know we can say the block uh, which is going to be executed uh, whether is your, whether your exception is being handled whether your exception is uh, not not being handled. So, irrespective of that if you want uh, some particular code to be executed uh, you know certainly. Uh, then uh, that has to be placed inside the finally and finally uh, is not going to take any uh, you know any parameter any uh, reference thing or something of uh, that sort. While if we talk about the catch, the catch block is used to handle the exception by declaring the type of exception within the uh, parameter. Uh, now, what is diff, uh, what is you know particular or what is uh, tricky about this parameter that the declared exception must be the parent class uh, exception that is the class exception as you know E capital or the generated exception type. So, either uh, so for example, uh, your code is throwing uh, your code is raising an exception of arithmetic exception. Uh, so, within the catch uh, block or within the parameters of the catch either you, you are going to write arithmetic exception or you are going to write the term exception and in within this exception the E is capital because that is the you know parent class exception. So, the declared exception either must be the parent class exception or the uh, or the generated exception type. Uh, so, uh, what, I, what I am trying to say here is uh, for example, your code is raising an arithmetic exception and at the in the catch block you are going to write an array index out of bound exception and the reference variable. Uh, so, that is not going to work. So, in the you know within the catch parameters either you need to write the parent class exception and the reference variable or you want to write the proper you know generated exception type which is um, arithmetic exception here in this case which I am uh, you know which example I am telling you. Uh, so, what what is the you know kind of we can say a better approach to use the parent class or to use the uh, reference of the appropriate class. So, the you know uh, the good or the preferable approach is to declare uh, the generated uh, type of uh, exception and also one particular thing uh, which is you know uh, which is to be worth 
uh, noting here is uh, your try uh, or, or you know within a single uh, with a single try there can be multiple catch blocks. So, there can be one catch block which is you know handling the exception uh, arithmetic exception or there could be you know uh, another catch block which is uh, handling array index out of bound exception and then so on and so forth. So, there can be you know multiple uh, catch blocks uh, with a single try uh, block and yes we will be looking into examples of uh, this scenario. Uh, but before going into this uh, let us see how this you know uh, this internal working of uh, try catch block is actually you know kind of uh, you know happening. Uh, so, basically and you know with a particular statement let us say you know integer data divided data is equals to 100 or 10 divided by 0. Uh, there is an exception uh, which is being raised. Now, there can be uh, two situations with this exception either this exception is going to be handled or this exception is you know not going to be handled and then uh, because of this thing uh, there is you know a kind of we can say a diamond box which is uh, showing the decision here. So, whether the exception is being handled then you know different situations are going to uh, happen and if the exception is handled then uh, you know the different situations are going to uh, happen. Let us see uh, what will happen here. So, basically your Java virtual machine is first going to check whether your exception is being handled or not handled. If the exception is being handled well and good, if it is not handled then it is the duty of the JVM to provide a default exception handler and that default exception handler is going to perform some specific tasks. So, for example, what are those specific tasks which are being performed by uh, you know uh, Java virtual machine uh, uh, which is being provided by the default exception handler provided by Java virtual machine these three uh, or these specific tasks are uh, first is to print out uh, the exception description that means whatever description is being raised uh, JVM default handler exception default exception handler is going to print out the exception of that description. Apart from that it is going to print uh, the stack trace which is nothing but the hierarchy of methods where the exceptions uh, where the exception has occurred uh, and obviously it is going to you know uh, cause the program to uh, terminate. So, the three things if application program has uh, application programmer has not handled uh, the exception. The default exception handler provided by JVM will print out the description of the exception, it will print the uh, stack trace and it will cause the program to terminate. Uh, but if the application programmer is going to handle the exception that means the exception is being handled, the normal flow of the application is maintained that means rest of the code which is being given. Uh, inside the catch block or inside you know we can say the finally thing uh, that is going to be uh, executed. Uh, so, you know uh, sometimes a question which comes up that uh, uh, why it is necessary to have you know exception handling thing. So, what, what will happen if we you know uh, do not handle the exception. So, here I have told you uh, that if application programmer uh, handles the exception normal flow of the application is maintained and if the exception is not being handled then after printing the details of the exception it will cause the program to terminate. So, what will happen? Let us see uh, this with the help of an example. Now, here we have the similar example, but uh, this is without the try block that means we are not going to handle the exception here. So, what, what is happening? Uh, so, within the public class we have uh, main function and with that we do not have any uh, try block or something of that sort. And here also integer data is equals to 50 by 0 that is going to you know kind of raise an exception. And after that uh, we have written some uh, you know code uh, and here you know just uh, as a token we have written system dot out dot print ln rest of the code. And uh, here exception is not being handled. So, what will happen here? Here on raising this exception uh, which is the arithmetic exception divide by 0 whatever is being written as rest of the code will not be you know we can say will not be executed. Uh, so, for example, uh, let us say there are you know 100 lines of codes uh, after this uh, 
uh, after their statement which is going to throw an exception then what will happen to those 100 lines that particular code will not be you know kind of uh, 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 handled so these uh, might uh, might be the uh, there might be 100 lines of code after the exception and if the exception is not handled all the code below the exception will not be executed that code which is written below the exception inside the catch block will be handled uh, or if it is inside the finally block that will be you know kind of executed or you know uh, handled but with when exception is not handled this is not uh, possible uh, so here in this uh, lecture uh, let me sum up whatever we have you know gone through uh, after just a quick recall of uh, exception uh, mechanism we have gone into the five keywords what are the five uh, keywords uh, try catch finally throw and throws and uh, we have seen uh, briefly all those uh, keywords which are there to implement the exception handling mechanism in java uh, and then we have taken one example we tried to understood the whole structure whole internal working of uh, uh, the exception handling thing and also uh, with one a small example we have seen that what will happen if you know if we are not going to handle the exception and your code is going to uh, raise one uh, so here is a list of references which is being used for uh, preparation of lecture uh, hope you have enjoyed one i'll see you in the next lecture till then take care goodbye